Welcome to Neogen's Monday Mycotoxin and Crop Report for October 23rd. This week's headlines. Corn and soybean harvest falls further behind five-year average. New mycotoxin reports in corn, corn silage, and CGM. Impact of mycotoxins in hog production. This past week, the Midwest experienced cooler to moderate temperatures. Near normal rainfall across much of the Corn Belt slowed the pace of corn development and harvest progress. The USDA reports that 90% of corn has reached the mature stage, four points behind the five-year average. 11% of corn is poor to very poor condition, unchanged from last week, but still above 2016 levels. Corn in good to excellent condition rose to 65% this week up a point but still nine points below 2016 levels. Half of the country's 18 top corn producing states are still reporting corn in double digit poor to very poor conditions. South Dakota, Indiana, Kansas, North Dakota, Michigan, Nebraska, Iowa, Illinois, and Wisconsin. Only 28% of corn acres have been harvested in major producing states, progressing only four points from last week. This puts the harvest 19 points behind the five-year average and nine points behind 2016. Turning to our mycotoxin in corn map, this week we have a new report of aflatoxin in Georgia of greater than 100 ppb. Other reports of aflatoxin have come in from Texas, Alabama, Oklahoma, and Kansas. Also new this week, our first reports of xarelinone, one from Iowa of greater than 750 ppb in corn, and one from New York of greater than 800 ppb in corn gluten meal. Our final new report is of T2-HT2 in Wisconsin corn silage, greater than 600 ppb. This joins a previous report from Texas. Over the course of the season, Fumanison reports have come from North Carolina, Tennessee, Alabama, Oklahoma, Texas, Missouri, Nebraska, and Kansas. Don has been reported in corn and corn silage in a number of states, including New York, Pennsylvania, Texas, Iowa, South Dakota, and Minnesota. Mycotoxins are impacted most by the weather during growing season. However, harvest timing, crop moisture management, and storage methods also play a part in toxin growth. Please watch this space next week for more mycotoxin updates as the corn harvest advances. This week, Hyatt Fabros, Swine Nutrition Specialist and U.S. Business Manager for JYGA Technologies, Inc., discusses his research of the effects of Don in hog production. Deoxin of alanol, more commonly known as Don or vomitoxin, is an important mycotoxin for North American livestock producers. It typically develops when warm, wet weather coincides with the time around corn silking, and it's one of the most important mycotoxins because it occurs frequently and at levels that are toxicologically relevant for swine. Of the livestock species, pigs are the most susceptible due to the fact that it's rapidly absorbed in their body and extensively distributed throughout their body tissues, and it's poorly broken down by the pig's liver. When pigs are fed non-contaminated diets, the most common symptoms include decreased feed intake and immune suppression, and this is why nutritionists typically try to exclude vomitoxin from diets of, on at-risk animals such as lactating sows and nursery pigs. Of additional concern is the use of DDGs because they concentrate the source of the original toxin around three times. Many commercially available detoxifying agents exist and are commonly used in swine diets. However, a review by Dahl and Danicky in 2003 shows that fusarium toxins aka deoxin of alanol, when combined with a detoxifying agent, showed little to no benefit in approximately 19 out of 20 reference trials when looking at their effect on live weight gain of pigs. Because of this, many producers struggled to find the right detoxifying agent to eliminate the effect of vomitoxin in swine diets. Two studies that were conducted during my PhD at Kansas State University show some promise. On the left, we can see a graph highlighting the benefits of sodium metabisulfite, denoted as SMB on the chart here. When pelleted, it showed improvements in average daily gain in excess of the control diet. And this is due to not only a reduction in feed intake suppression, 
but also an improvement in feed efficiency. Although there are some concerns around the feeding of sodium metabisulfite, when pelleted it appears to have some benefits on breaking down Don. On the right hand side I wanted to point out the fact that Don is most significantly harmful in the first few days after pigs are fed Don contaminated diets. After initial exposure, pigs appear to have an attenuation to the Don and appear to bounce back after that suppression. Neogen's Reveal Q Plus Max for aflatoxin offers an aqueous solution which saves you money while giving accurate and fast quantitative results. Gypsa approved for AccuScan Gold and Pro readers. Thanks for watching and for sharing the YouTube link with colleagues. Have a great week.